Hey, what's going on? Chris here from Mixdown Online. And today I want to share with you the way I make reverse effects in Cubase and also how I can speed things up by setting up a macro. All right, so now if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, if you enjoyed this video, you think the video is helpful, share and like. Okay, now let's start things up. Reverse effects are very, very common. Uh, you can hear them in a lot of pop, EDM productions, even rock productions. They are mainly used as a transition effect between two different parts of a song, like uh, going from a pre-chorus to a chorus and so on. Okay, so this is how we, uh, uh, we tend to use reverse effects. Usually we're gonna take a symbol, a crash symbol, to reverse it, to create that effect, but you can use reverse effects with all types of different sources. I'm gonna show that to you later on. Okay, so let's start by uh, listening to the uh, crash symbol that I have. Now you can use any type of crash symbols. Uh, it can be one crash symbol that comes from your VST instrument like Groove Agent, for example. So if you're using a Groove Agent or other types of uh, VSTIs, uh, just um, trigger your sound sample with a MIDI note and then convert that sound into audio. So you'll, uh, you'll end up with an audio event like I have right now. Now, the easiest way to uh, to reverse a crash symbol, of course, is to just click on F7, process, and then uh, select reverse, okay? And that will typically just reverse that sound. That's okay, but I like to, uh, to go a step further. So I'm gonna go back one step. So first what I'm gonna do here is to record some audio. Actually, it's gonna be empty uh, because there's nothing recording. But the goal here is to extend the audio event so I get a bit more uh, of what comes before the actual symbol hit. And then I'm gonna click on audio and go down to bounce selection, click on replace. And there you go. Now there's a reason why I do so. Um, and you'll see afterwards what that, uh, what that does, okay? Compared to what we, uh, uh, we have when we just reverse the symbol. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is open the uh, direct offline processing, click on process like we did earlier and click on reverse. Then I'm gonna add a plugin and I'm gonna add a reverb plugin. All right, I'm gonna select this one. I love this plugin, so I'm gonna use uh, this reverb. You can use any reverb that you want. That doesn't matter. Then I'm gonna reverse that entire thing one more time. And this is what I am gonna end up with. So I have that uh, swell uh, reversed effect that comes before the actual hit, but I still have the the symbol hit that comes afterward that I can use in my mix if I want to. So let's bring that down because let's say I don't want to use it and I'm going to bring it down to the bar where I want my, uh, my reverse swell effect to end. Now I can hear that sucking feel uh, right at the end of the reverse effect, which is uh, quite nice. So it adds up to the entire transition. So let's listen to that in context. Cool, okay, so I like that. So that's a very simple way to make a reversed effect. So what I'm gonna show you now is how I added that up to a macro to speed things up. So. Let's go in uh, on edit down to key commands. And now I have my key commands window. At the bottom, if you don't see that part of the window, just make sure that you click on show macros at the bottom and then you'll see all the macros available. Um, now I have one that is called reverse reverb and that one is the one that I made myself and I'm gonna just explain to you what I did here, okay? But I'm gonna leave those steps in the description of the video in case you wanna create yourself a macro 
to, uh, to make a reverse defect. So first what I did was um, click on transport locators to selection. Okay, then mute events. I'm going to show you why afterwards. And then duplicate tracks. Then select all on tracks, unmute that event, convert to real copy, which is basically the bounce selection. Then select all on tracks one more time, go to left locator, then reverse the plugin, and then reverse one more time. Okay, so let's try it out on this road, uh, road sound here. Okay, I'm just gonna have you listen to it before. Okay, I'm gonna reverse that. Now, I'm gonna do the same as I did with the crash. Okay, I'm gonna record a bit before. And I'm just gonna copy paste that one at the end here so I get a bit more release. Okay, I'm gonna select all of those events uh, and then bounce selection. I have a keyboard shortcut, so this way it's faster. So what I do usually when I want to apply reverse effect on a symbol, I make sure that uh, the symbol track or any the audio I want to use to reverse is on a track by itself. So there's nothing else on that track. Uh, then what I want to do here is to select the event I want to apply my macro on and also the track. Okay, so I'm going to select both. And then I'm going to go up on edit down to macros. And now I'm going to see my reverse reverb macro. So I'm going to click on that macro and that will uh, make the entire process without having to do everything manually. And there you go. Now I have my reverse uh, road sound. Let's have a quick listen. Cool. Let's bring that down a bit. All right. Let's listen to that again. Cool. Let's listen to both at the same time. Nice. In the context of the mix now. So there you go. This is what the macro did. It first uh, selected the left and right locators to that event. Okay, the selected event. Then it muted that event, duplicated the track, unmuted that event again, applied all the processing and so on. And it brought the playhead to the beginning of the locator. So uh, when everything was done, I was ready to click on play and listen to uh, the sound itself. So this is what you can do with a macro. It speeds things up and I kind of like it. Now, if you don't have Cubase Pro, you have Cubase Artist, uh, now it's going to be hard to do. You won't be able to use a macro the way I did it. Um, and also the problem you're going to be facing is the limitation of the uh, direct offline processing found in Cubase Artist. Because in Cubase Artist, you're only going to have access to the process tab and not the plugin tab. So what you'll need to do is to uh, click on your um, on your track, the track you want to you want to apply the effect on and uh, you're going to go down to audio, down to processes or just click on F7, apply the reverse effect. Then if you want to do exactly like I did, uh, just add a uh, as an insert, you can add your reverb as an insert and make sure it's a 100% wet. Then keep your uh, your event selected, then click on edit and then render in place. Make sure your track is unmuted. And there you go. And what I do in this case, I would click on complete signal path or just channel settings, click on render, and that will create your reversed effect with the reverb on the track below. And then the only thing that you need to do is to select that new event and uh, go back to uh, direct offline processing, click on process and reverse. And there you go, you're gonna get to the same result. All right, so this is gonna be it for today. I hope that was helpful. If so, share and like, and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Until next time, take care and see you.